Gaming setups can get very expensive, you guys. We've seen what people can do when they have extremely high budgets. But what if I told you, you can build a fully functioning setup that will allow you to game over 144 FPS in 1080p high settings, all under $1,000. Well, that is exactly what I'm doing today. I'm gonna to be building a $1,000 gaming setup using only Amazon, and yes, the PC is already included. So you just build a brand new shiny PC and you're greeted with this nasty notification on the bottom right corner of your screen. Well, instead of going out there and paying full price for a Windows key, you guys can actually get one for less than $15. That's right, you guys can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key for less than $15 by visiting yourcdkey.com or by clicking my link below and using my code TS20 for that extra 20% off. They also sell Windows 11 and Microsoft Office keys and the same discount code applies. Now, once you get your CD key, all you have to do is go into the activation settings on Windows and put in the new key and watch the watermark disappear. So just like building any setup, it always starts with a desk. You always wanna buy a desk that's going to support your setup as well as any upgrades you plan on doing in the next few years. The worst thing you could do is buy a cheap desk and then decide next year that you want to upgrade to a better one. Then when you do get the new desk, you have to take apart everything and then start all over. And nobody wants to do that. So for this setup, I picked up the Cold Home 47 inch modern desk. I got this for $70 and they do come in a variety of different color options, but I decided to go with the vintage just to try something different. And also I really do like the look of it. All right, let's see how fast I can put this all together. Start the timer. Done. That had to have been less than 10 minutes, right? That was probably the easiest desk assembly I've ever done. All right. So first impressions of the desk, it's an extremely light desk, you guys. I can grab it with, with just one arm. Um, and because of that, it's very flimsy. I can already feel the bowing in the center. It says it supports up to 110 pounds. I don't want to sit on this because I'm pretty sure it's going to crack. I'm 177, so <laughs> I don't want to send this in for a replacement. But I mean, you can't really ask for much. It's $70. It does come with a uh, headphone anchor that you can install on either side of the desk. So that's pretty cool. And I really do like the vintage look of the countertop. So overall, I mean, yeah, it's a nice desk. Can't complain for 70 bucks. Unfortunately, it did arrive a little damaged. Looks like a piece of the tabletop was chipped off over here in the corner. Um, the best part about buying this on Amazon is their return service is amazing. So I can technically reach out and send this out for a free replacement, but it's such a small area on the desk that I'm not gonna even bother with it, to be honest. Okay, so after the desk, the next thing you guys should budget for is always the monitor because the monitor is the most used part of any setup. And it's also going to affect how you're gonna use your setup ultimately. I was able to pick up a 27 inch gaming monitor from Scepter. This is a 165 hertz of fresh weight, one millisecond response time, IPS gaming monitor. And I got this for $120, an absolute steal for this setup. When you guys are shopping around for a monitor, you gotta make sure that your PC can handle it. Basically, if you're buying a high refresh rate monitor like this, you're gonna need a capable GPU to help push those games on here. The rule of thumb is to achieve one FPS per refresh rate of your monitor. So let's say you have 165 Hertz refresh rate monitor, you're gonna need to be able to push at least 165 FPS in your games to take advantage of the refresh rate of your monitor. So one of the things I like about the SEPTA monitors are the way they do their ports. It's horizontal as opposed to vertical that you would find on most monitors. If you plug the cables in from the bottom, you can usually see the cable hanging down from the front of the monitors and I don't like that. So that's why I like the approach um, that Scepter took. You plug the cables in directly from the back and it's gonna be a lot easier to uh, cable manage. So it's not gonna be as visible from the front. If this monitor is somehow out of stock or the price changed by the time you guys are watching this video, I'll drop a link to an alternative down below. All right, moving on to peripherals. Believe it or not, you guys, but I was able to pick up 
both a keyboard and a gaming mouse for less than $40. A 60% mechanical gaming keyboard for 30 bucks and a wannabe Model O gaming mouse for $10. The keyboard actually comes in a variety of different colors, but I picked the most color neutral option for this setup so it doesn't stick out as much. So I went with the black and gray with linear red switches. It doesn't have any RGB, but the keys are backlit, which is nice, and you get double shot PBT keycaps and a detachable USB-C cable. The main reason why I bought this keyboard, other than the price, of course, was the fact that it has dedicated arrow keys, and that is an absolute must for me. Okay, the setup is definitely still missing something. The peripherals look very naked on there. I think we should definitely add a mouse pad not only to protect the surface from getting scratched, but also provide the mouse a uh, really nice surface to glide on. But which design will fit this setup the most? Let's see. We do have mostly black components, so I think we should go with a color neutral black and white or even a black and gray color scheme design. Maybe the camo? Let's try the camo. Oh, it's a big pad. There's going to be some overlapping from the monitor, which isn't a very big deal. It's actually going to cover most of the surface, which is what we want. It's not bad. I mean, yeah, the camera would look really nice with it. I like how the gray accents on here match the keycaps. This is a good option, but I do want to try one other design. So this is from our new season eight collection of TechSource mouse pads. This is called Dusk. And I like this design the most because it's minimalistic, but it also has some gray tones in there, which will complement the keycaps on the keyboard a lot better. Oh yeah, just, just something about this mouse pad design that I really, really like. Oh yeah, this is the one. This is the perfect pad for this setup. You got the white complementing the wall, and then you got the black and gray accents from the river that complement the keycaps, peripherals, and even the monitor and the PC once we put that on there. But yeah, this is the perfect pad for this setup. You guys can grab this exact same design or choose from our many other designs from our website, dealsource.tech slash store. So if you guys are looking to spice up your setup with a high quality mouse pad, or if you wanna just support the channel, definitely consider picking one up. Okay, let's set up the audio gear from the setup. We're gonna start with the speakers. Uh, it was an easy choice going with the Creative Pebbles just because of the sound quality offers for the price. You just can't find better value um, speakers than the Creative Pebbles V2 out there right now. What I love about the Pebbles so much is that they're extremely small so they don't take up much space on the desk. They also sound really good. We get crystal clear highs with a decent enough bass for less than $20. I mean, come on, what more can you ask for? Also, it's gonna match the color scheme of the setup. The black will match the monitors and the peripherals and the gold accent will match the countertop. Now, even though we have a primary audio source for the setup, which are the speakers, it's always a good idea to pick up some headphones for a bit of privacy, as well as a more accurate spatial awareness while gaming. Um, while you're gaming, you always wanna use headphones. You never wanna rely on your desktop speakers. So I went with the Sony MDR ZX110s because these are $10 on Amazon. And judging by the reviews, a lot of people seem to like these. Um, there is a mic option, which is $8 more, but we're not gonna need that because I did pick up a dedicated mic as well. I'm really actually interested to check out the sound quality on these, so I'll be testing these out at the end of the video. Oh, that's cool. I had no idea they actually fold. So these will be pretty cool for travel as well. So we'll plug these in the PC once we bring that out. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna hang it over here on the side. So I didn't get the headphones with the mic option because I wanted to pick up my own dedicated mic in case I wanted to do voiceovers for content creation or just better mic quality sound during gaming. I was able to pick up this Bigfoot all-in-one USB condenser microphone for less than $30 was a pretty damn good deal, if you ask me. Ideally, I would want to hook up this microphone to a boom arm, but we can't afford it. Unfortunately, that does not fit within our $1,000 budget. It's gonna put us right over. So I'm just gonna use the built-in mic stand uh, that came with this. Oh, wow, it actually kind of reminds me of the Blue Yeti, in a way. Oh, wow, yeah, that's a pretty big microphone. Jeez. We have a gain control up top, and then we can choose with directional pattern. The microphone picks up the audio. I'm definitely gonna be doing an audio test with the microphone at the end of the video once I review the setup. 
All right, it's time to bring out the PC that I built on the channel a few weeks ago. I do wanna put this on the desk. We gotta make space for the PC on the desk. Oh, it's super close actually. You know, we should be able to make it work. Just gotta shift a few things over to the left side. Speakers. Let's bring the mouse pad to you actually, hold on. Oh, nice. Beautiful, beautiful. So this is the $600 gaming PC that I built on the channel a few weeks ago. It's an absolute little monster that tears through 1080p gaming. If you guys missed the video, definitely check it out because you'd be surprised at how well this custom PC performs for its price. I did buy all the parts for this PC on Amazon as well, and it's still within our $1,000 budget. So I'll drop a link to this build down below if you guys wanna check it out, as well as a build guide in case you guys wanna build this PC or any PC really. No setup is complete without some cable management. I picked up some double-sided tape, cable clips, and a power strip to help me manage the cables underneath the desk. I'm gonna slap the power strip underneath here using some double-sided tape, and I'm just gonna plug everything into it. I got this one specifically because the outlets are located on the side. This means when I plug the cables in, they're not gonna be sticking out from the bottom, so it's gonna look a lot cleaner underneath the desk. Plus we got USB ports as well, which is great if you wanna charge any device. Uh, it's got two USB 3 and a Type-C, so you're covered for smartphone charging, headsets, wireless mice, or anything. Last but not least, we're gonna need a chair to sit on. I found a pretty decent office chair from Amazon for only $30, and it actually kinda looks like the chair I used in the Wish setup. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the exact same chair the exact same material used in the in the wish chair oh no the arm bars are different but the mesh backing looks the same it could be from the same manufacturer for all i know but let's go ahead and assemble this and see how comfortable it really is Dude, this is the exact same chair as the one from Wish. You got memory foam padding on the bottom here, mesh backing with lumbar support. The wheels don't go across the carpet as smoothly. That's the only difference. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much the same chair. It's comfortable. The armrests are a little too low for me. I don't even know the point of these, to be honest. I feel like it's a little too small for me, but it's extremely comfortable. I like it. It's the perfect height for the desk as well. For 30 bucks, can't complain. All right, so what are we looking at for the total? $996. We made it, guys. Just $4 under our budget. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, let's give it a test drive. So just like all setups I build on the channel, I gotta spend a few days testing it out. So I've been playing Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 for a couple days now, and here are my final thoughts, starting with the desk. I really like the desk. It does what it's supposed to and nothing more. It's 45 inches in width and 20 inches deep, which is big enough to support a 27 inch monitor, a couple speakers, and still have space for a mid tower case. It's a bit on the flimsy side. The tabletop is extremely thin and wobbles quite a bit, so I wouldn't put anything heavy on the desk. I do like that it comes with a headphone anger and a variety of different finishes that you can choose from. But for $70, I think it's a decent desk and it's gonna be pretty hard to find something better within this price point. Moving on to the peripherals, starting with the keyboard. I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. It's got a really nice build quality, PBT double shot keycaps and a smooth and responsive typing experience. I'm also a fan of the dedicated arrow keys on the bottom right and the fact that each key is backlit is really nice. The only downsides is that the lighting is not RGB. You only get light blue 
um, which you can turn off by the way if you want. And also the switches are not hot swappable. So you're pretty much stuck with whatever switch you choose. But they do have blue switches as well. In fact, they have a bunch of different color combos on Amazon. But do keep in mind that each color scheme is tied to a specific switch. You either get blues or reds. The mouse on the other hand is garbage. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I know it's a $10 mouse and I shouldn't expect a high grade sensor in here, but this mouse is pretty bad in every possible way. The best way I can describe playing with this mouse is downgrading from a 60 hertz monitor to a 30 hertz monitor. On top of that, it doesn't even glide that well. The feet that they used on this mouse does not slide well on fabric mouse pads. It feels very scratchy. Just for comparison, my Model O wireless is so much smoother. It glides much better. It is night and day between these two. And I know one is a $70 mouse, I get that, but I just wanted to show how bad the T98 really is. Also, the side buttons are very mushy with horrible feedback. The only cool thing about this mouse is the RGB lighting and the honeycomb design if you're into that, but that's pretty much it. You really are getting what you pay for here and I would strongly advise against buying this mouse. Spend an extra $10 and just get something better. The mouse pad was definitely a great purchase and strongly recommended for all setups to prevent the desk from scratches and also provide a nice surface for the mouse to glide on but the pad size is way too big for the desk and the monitor is forced to overlap it, which is why I have to deduct one point from it. Speaking of the monitor, I had a lot of fun gaming and watching content on it. It's extremely fast with its 165 Hz refresh rate and the colors are amazing thanks to the IPS panel. This means you get exceptional viewing angles and excellent color reproduction. It's also a nice looking monitor with very thin bezels all around and it's basic compatible so you can mount it if you choose. The only downsides I found with the monitor are the color accuracy and the amount of ghosting that was present. Even though it's an IPS panel, they used a very cheap panel to cut costs, not even scoring 100% of sRGB color space and only covering 77% of Adobe RGB. Also, despite advertising a one millisecond response time, the monitor still presents noticeable ghosting, which is disappointing. This feels more like a three to five millisecond response time display instead of a one as advertised. That being said, given the price, you're not gonna find any other monitor out there with these specs. 27 inch, 165 Hertz refresh rate, on an IPS display with thin bezels, VESA compatibility, and built-in speakers. I wouldn't pay more than $150 for this monitor. Okay, let's shift over to the audio gear, starting with the speakers. I've used the Pebble V2s many times before, and I always recommend these to people who are building a setup on a budget. You just can't beat the value that these offer. $20 for a pair of great sounding speakers that don't take up much space on the desk. You're an Avenger. You have a daughter, but you've lost a lot of time, like me. They are USB powered, so you just have to plug the USB cable into the back of your PC and the 3.5 millimeter cable into the audio jack in the back. These headphones were actually quite surprising, only because I've had terrible experience with similar price headphones in the past. So that's why I was pleasantly shocked at the sound quality. I can see why 99,000 people like these so much. The build quality, I'm gonna be honest, it's extremely cheap and flimsy, but I get that they had to cut some corners, obviously, to be able to sell these and still make a profit. These sit right on your ear with pretty comfortable ear cups, I would say, but they don't block out any outside noise. There is a lot of bleeding, so it's not the best to use when you're traveling. However, for gaming and watching content, they're awesome. One thing to keep in mind is that the cable is extremely short, so you're gonna have to plug this in the front panel of your PC. This leads me to the microphone. The Behringer Bigfoot is an awesome microphone for the price. I was able to snag it for $28, which is an absolute steal. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough budget left over to buy a nice boom arm, so I just keep it in the corner of the desk when I'm not using it. But I did leave some extra slack that way I can bring the mic closer to me when I'm actually using it. All right, so here's what the microphone sounds like directly in front of my mouth. I would say I'm about six inches away from it. I am using the cardioid pattern to capture audio directly in front of the mic, and this is all recorded without any background noise and editing.
All right, so now I'm leaning back into my chair and the microphone is to the left of me, which is how I'll be using a microphone while I'm working or gaming at my setup. And even though the microphone is sitting at an angle of my desk, I'm still able to capture my voice without any problems. Now finally, here's a sample of me talking into the microphone while I'm gaming on my keyboard and mouse. And as expected, you can probably hear my keyboard and mouse clearly. It is a condenser microphone after all, so if it's going to be next to your keyboard and mouse, it will pick up the noises. This is why I recommend going with a boom arm. That way you can move the microphone further away from the peripherals. I'll drop a link to an arm that pairs nicely with the microphone down below for anyone interested. The PC powering the entire setup is a $600 budget build that's equipped with an Intel Core i3 12100F, 16 gigs of RAM running at 3200 megahertz, and an MSI RX 6600. It's able to run most games over 144 FPS in 1080p high settings. It's even got a little bit of RGB. If you guys want to see how the PC performs on all the popular games out there, make sure to watch the full build video. You can click on the bubble on the top right to check it out. And last but not least, let's talk about the cable management. So I used some leftover Velcro straps to tie the keyboard and mouse cables to the monitor mount just so it looks nicer. I also routed the rest of the cables underneath the desk using cable clips and I hooked up a power strip under here using some double-sided adhesive. And finally, I ran the power strip cable down one of the table legs using some Velcro straps. It's not the cleanest cable work I've done, but you know, it's pretty damn good considering I didn't use any raceways or cable racks. The chair isn't terrible, but it's not a great chair either. The armrests are way too low, making them absolutely useless to me, and the wheels don't exactly roll over carpet easily. It is comfortable, however. My butt cheeks are extremely happy with the memory foam padding, and my back appreciates the breathable mesh with lumbar support. I also love the option of leaning back on the chair. However, you can lock this using the lever on the side. So with all the ratings calculated, we have an average score of 8.7 for this setup. But I would love to hear what you guys think about the setup. Let me know what your rating is in the comment section down below. Is there something you would have done differently? Please keep in mind, I only had $1,000 to work with. For my next setup build, I wanna do a really clean, all white gaming and streaming setup. If that's something you guys are interested in seeing, let me know by tossing a like. If this video gets 10,000 likes, I will make it happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe for more awesome setup coming your way and I'll see you very soon in the next one.